I heard noises. <sighs> Nightmares? Yeah. You want to talk about it? No. All right then. Wait. Don't go, please. You know, sometimes talking about bad dreams can make them go away. Not this one. I've had it since I was a really little kid. It, was, it started after I was almost kidnapped. I was playing in my front yard and this creep just came up behind me and grabbed me and... He didn't even look like a man to me, he just looked like some kind of monster. My dad came running to my rescue and luckily the guy just dropped me and took off when he saw my dad and I cried that whole day and but my dad held me just so tight. After that, I'd had this reoccurring nightmare. And it's always the same. I'm, I'm in a dark tunnel. And there's this monster chasing me. And no matter how fast I run, it always catches me. And just as it's about to grab me, I, it looks me in the eye. And all I see is just this suffocating blackness, and I can't move, I can't breathe, I can't even scream, and... Then I just wake up. That's awful. Does the medication help you sleep? <laughs> no. It just makes me feel like a zombie the next day. Yeah. Never was one for meds myself. Who's this then? <laughs> Racky. My dad gave him to me after my nightmare started. He would put on little puppet shows and would help me calm down after a nightmare. Racky was the hero who would fight the night monsters. You see, raccoons will live in the dark. He's not afraid of it. So he was the hero. Now he just reminds me to have courage like I'm a hero fighting villains or something. Your dad sounds like a good man. 
He was. What happened to him? He... He died in a car crash about five years ago. <sighs> Some kind of angel stayed with me until, until the ambulance came. But it was too late for my dad. He, he was killed instantly. My nightmares came back after that crash. I'm so sick of fighting. Fighting what? I don't know, life. I know the feeling. What? Nothing, it just... The funny thing about pain is sometimes it can look an awful lot like the thing you're trying to cling on to. It takes an awful lot of courage to let go when every fiber of your being is screaming to hold on. But once you do, you'll find there's so much light on the other side. I wish I could convince myself that's true. Well, take it from an old spaceman. Lauren, I don't know if this will help you, but there are two things that I know. One, you are loved, more than you could possibly imagine. Everyone in this universe, including you, is so, so special and unique, and the universe needs you because of it. And two, you are never alone, even if you think you're the only one fighting the demons, if you're the only one facing them. There's always someone out there who loves you, and the memory of them will carry you through anything. Remember that. If not for yourself, then for me. <laughs> wow. Deep doctor. <laughs> that hasn't happened before. Why are you telling me all this? Well, you spilled your guts. Might as well return the favor. <laughs> doctor, seriously. Because I know how hard fighting can be when you think the burden is yours alone to bear. Anyway, promise me you'll remember. Good. Think you can get back to sleep? Yeah. All right then. <sighs> Doctor? Could you leave the light on? Well, I can do better than that. It's beautiful. I know. Pick one to visit. We'll be there when you wake up. Uh, no. That one. Oh, the Mirror Galaxy. Excellent choice. You'll love it. Why? What's out there? You'll know soon enough. Now go to sleep. I am not a child, Doctor. You can't tell me what to do. Everyone's a child compared to me. Besides, you're the one with the stuffed animal. So what? You've got a blue box full of buttons and stuff. And don't get me started on your fashion sense. You look like a D D nerd or something. I, I, you know what? This tie. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Doctor. Thank you. Sleep well, Lauren. <laughs>